Today we'll be installing the latest release of Ubuntu server, which is 24.04 LTS. This is a great and minimal installation, which offers a command line interface and keeps the resource usage down to a minimum. What we'll first do is download the image that we need to install. We'll go up to get Ubuntu, go down to the server category and click get Ubuntu server. I'll also put a link in the description below to a direct image download. You'll notice here, download 24.04 LTS, 2.7 gigs. We're gonna click this button and give it a few moments to start the download. So save the image wherever you want. Now that I'm done downloading the ISO, I'm gonna launch and use the Belena Etcher app. What we're doing today is flashing this image onto a USB, CD, or DVD of your choice. Belena Etcher is an easy to use application to do this. After we're done flashing, we can take this USB over to the computer where we want to install Ubuntu server onto. As a bonus, I'll show you how to install a web server. So you can start developing a website right away by hosting it locally on your own server in a minimal environment. So we're gonna select the image, the one that we just got done downloading. Notice it says Ubuntu 24.04 live server AMD 64. I'm gonna click this and hit open. Then I'm gonna go and find the USB CD or DVD that I want to flash this image onto. I can hit change. Just make sure whatever device you have selected is completely free to use as this process will delete all the contents on it. And if you have more than one device, you can select it in this list. Once you have your selected, you can hit continue. You can also use other bootable disk creators like UNet Bootin or Rufus if you don't want to use Belenatcher. Anyways, after you're done with all of this, you can hit the flash button. You'll be asked for administrative privileges here. Hit yes and give it a few minutes to flash the image. After you flash the disk, you'll take it over to the computer or server where you want to install Ubuntu 24.04 LTS on and insert it into that computer. Then you'll have to boot into your BIOS in order to change the settings around of the boot priority. So you can select the newly created disk to be the first to boot. I'll be showing you what that looks like on my computer next. All right, now that the flash is complete, I'm gonna go exit out of here and then take and eject the USB that I'm using and take it over to the computer where I want to install Ubuntu server on. I'll show you how I change my boot priorities around. Let's go check that out now. And on my computer, when it's first loading up, it's going to ask whether I want to boot in a BIOS. The key for my BIOS is F2 or the delete key. Yours might be something different in order to get in a BIOS. Make sure to look it up for your particular motherboard or computer. So since mine is a newer UEFI based BIOS, yours might be different, but I can use the mouse and mine, making it a little more convenient. What we're looking for is to change up the boot priority. Conveniently enough for me, it's available here on the right hand side. So I can look through and try finding the USB that I just got done flashing on, but it doesn't seem to be in one of the top four here. So I can either click the boot menu option F8, but let's go to the advanced mode for me, F7, because this might be what your BIOS more closely resembles. On mine, I have tabs up top, so I can select between the tabs. I have main, AI tweaker, advanced, monitor, and boot. Yours might say boot or boot priority. Make sure to find this in your BIOS and then go down. You want to select your boot option number one to be the storage disk, either USB, CD, or DVD that you just got done flashing. So I know mine's a 32 gigabyte USB. So if I look through the list, I should be able to find something that resembles that USB. And here it is right here, my verbatim store and go 1100. It's got about 32 gigs. I know this is the correct one. So I'm going to select storage disk. If you have multiple, avoid selecting the partitions, select the entire disk. So this one's the entire disk. I noticed that by seeing no mention of partitions. Anyways, I'm gonna press enter on this and this should be enough to allow us to boot into our live environment or installer. I'll make one more mention here in BIOS. If you are trying to install Linux, you'll want to make sure that you have your secure boot settings disabled or set to another OS besides Windows, or else your system will keep trying to boot into Windows, regardless of what you have put into your computer. Also, if you can find fast boot on your computer, you might want to disable that one as well if you're having trouble booting into your Linux environment. All right, and if you did everything correctly, you'll get this screen here where you'll get a timeout. If you hit a key, you'll end the timeout and you'll be ready to try or install Ubuntu server. No worries if it went past this, that's because it timed out and selected the first default option for you, which is the one we wanna pick anyway. And if you made it this far, please smash that like button for me. 
So select the try or install Ubuntu server option and press enter. Give it a few moments to load things up. So first, when entering the installer, we're asked what language would you want to use for the installation? I'm gonna select English, select whatever you're comfortable with. Simply use the up and down arrows in order to get to your selection and then press enter. Once you've done that, you're now select the keyboard variant that you're gonna be using. Again, use the up and down arrows to select. If you need to toggle into the drop down mode, just press enter. And then again, you can use the up and down arrows. The default English US keyboard layout variant is fine for me. So I'm going to keep the default. You can also use identify keyboard for it to try to automatically pick up on it through a series of questions. You can run through that process as well if necessary. After you're done, go down to the bottom, make sure that done is selected in green and press enter. So here we ask, what type of installation do we want to perform? Well, there's a few options, Ubuntu server and then Ubuntu server minimized. And finally search for third party drivers. The minimized version says here, it's a customized small runtime footprint in environments where humans are not expected to log in. Well, we're expecting ourselves to log in. So I'm gonna leave the default Ubuntu server. Additional options allow you to install third party drivers. It says that some of these drivers are third party and proprietary, and it suggests using this if you're installing for FIPS or a real time kernel. Since we're not, we don't need to select the third party. We just go down and hit done with the default Ubuntu server install selected. Be forewarned at the end of this installation, you're not gonna have a desktop environment. You're just going to have a console or command line that you can interact with and remote into. That's because the server edition is meant to be as minimal as possible. So your server can get as many resources as possible. On this screen, we're setting up our network. So the operating system detected a network connection on the adapter called ENP0S3 for me. It has a DHCP v4 address, meaning the router gave me an address automatically. If you don't have something giving IP addresses out on your network, you'll have to highlight the adapter, press enter, go down to edit IPv4 or IPv6 accordingly. Let's say we're editing IPv4 to give it an address manually. We can then press enter and then select manual and put in our manual subnet address gateway, name servers, and anything else that we need in order to get a proper connection. Since I'm using DHCP, I don't need this. Mine's already assigned and I'm going to reserve it in the router itself. You'll also wanna make sure that you have some form of internet access because you'll wanna receive updates and some are important like security updates. Once you have a connection, you can hit done. Here we can configure a proxy. I don't have a proxy, but if you do, follow the standard form that's given. It says HTTP colon slash slash user pass host and port. After you're done, just press enter. Now Ubuntu on the next page will try to get a mirror for you, which is closest to you. Mine's clearly in the US. It will also just do a few basic gets to make sure you are connected to the internet and to that specific repo. The default's fine for me, so I'm just gonna go down to done and press enter. And here is where the fun begins. What we have here is a selection for using the entire disk. Since this is a brand new installation, we will be taking advantage of the entire storage disk on this server. I will select this option. I will also leave the default set up this disk as an LVM group. LVM stands for logical value management, and it makes it a lot easier for you to manage your storage post installation. It allows you to grow and shrink your storage and pools, which is a lot easier than using a standard partitioning scheme. If you'd like to encrypt the LVM, you can by selecting this option. I'm not going to do that. You just have to press space and then enter a paraphrase in a, and confirm that paraphrase, but you'll have to put in that password every time you log into the computer to unlock your storage space. I do wanna mention one last thing. When you use the entire disk, it will erase the contents of the entire disk space. So make sure you have the proper one selected by pressing enter and going through your list if you have more than one. Of course, confirm that the storage space, mine's 200 gigs, matches what you're expecting to see. And as long as that's correct, you can press enter and move down to the done and press enter again. Okay, so there's a lot going on this page here. We're gonna start at the very beginning. So what this says here is a few things. It's showing you how it's about to partition the disk. First, we have our root partition, which is allocated with 98 gigs. Second, we have a boot partition, which is two gigs. And then inside that boot partition, there's a gig allocated to the EFI 
based BIOS since this is an EFI based system. Moving on, we have the device called Ubuntu Volume Group, which is brand new, which is part of the LVM that we were talking about before. It says it's gonna allocate 196 gigs, but what's interesting after that is that there's free space. It says 98 gigs. So I wanna make sure to change this around a little bit to make sure that it's also using the 98 gigs. Basically what's happening is things are getting spliced in half. I'm going down to new devices and notice in the Ubuntu LV, it says 98.47. It's new, it's mounted on root as an ext4 journaling file system. I'm gonna select the Ubuntu LVM, press enter, go down, hit edit, and then notice it says size max 196.945G. Now your number might be different, use whatever number you have. That way you're taking the max size of what's available I'm just gonna go over and I'm gonna erase all of this. And it says my max is 196.945. So that's what I'm gonna put in to utilize the entire space. Now I'm taking advantage of the entire disk space. I'm gonna press save. And now we'll notice how things have changed here. No longer is there any free space up top. And I can see now that my whole volume group matches my logical volume below. And I'm taking up the complete space. If you don't do this, what will happen is you'll only use about half of your space, which is a little frustrating because later on, you'll have to grow that space if you wanna use it entirely. So below that, it explains everything that's about to happen. There's gonna be a gig taken up for the first partition, for the second one, two gigs, and finally there's 196, almost 197 for me, for the root partition, where all your files, packages, and file system exists for the server. Once you are confident that you have the proper disk selected and that you're using all the space, also that you're comfortable overriding the contents of this particular storage disk, you can select done. The operating system will warn you one more time. Hey, look, you're about to completely erase the contents of this storage disk that you have selected. Mine's completely clean. It's a brand new disk. No big deal for me. Just make sure you have the proper one selected. And when you're confident, you can select continue. Now we're being asked to supply a user for the operating system. I'm gonna put my name in. And I'm gonna call the server Savvy Server. Then I'm gonna also pick the username Savvy Nick. Password, I'm gonna put in and then confirm that password a second time. Make sure you remember this username and password that you're setting. You're gonna be needing it after the install to log in. After you've selected your username and password, press done. If for some reason you want to update your server to the Ubuntu Pro Edition for additional security updates. You can do this by default that selects skip for now. That's because you can do this later as well. So I'm just gonna keep the default and hit continue. It's asking us if we wanna install the open SSH server. This is a great idea, so I'm gonna press space. This is a headless server, meaning there's no GUI and you probably want access remotely. You'll wanna install open SSH server because it's the easiest way to get in remotely. And once I'm finished with that, I'm just gonna go down to done. Following that, we have all sorts of packages that we can select from here. This can help you set up different servers or databases, front end tools, and all sorts of other stuff. Unless you have something very specific that you wanna select and it sticks out to you, do not select anything. Just go down to done. You can always install these post install of the server operating system. And that's what I suggest because then you're keeping things at a minimum. Remember, I will be showing you how to set up a web server momentarily. We're almost done with the installation. Just press done after you finish selecting packages. Okay, so what's happening now is the installation is actually taking place. This will take a few minutes, anywhere from 10 minutes to an hour, depending on how fast your system is, how fast your internet is. Just be patient, give it a few moments to finish up the installation. And once the installation is complete, you'll see it up top on the left, it says installation complete. Go down to reboot now by using the arrows and press enter. Give it a few moments to reboot and start loading some stuff. The very last thing you'll see here is please remove the installation media, then press enter. This means remove the CD, DVD, or USB that you're using to install Ubuntu Server 24.04 LTS, or else you're gonna be booting back into that install image if you fail to do so, not a big deal. Just shut down the system, remove the USB, and then boot it back up to get into your actual install 
So if you've removed your medium at this point, you can press enter. Now, if things restart and you see this screen, you've successfully installed Ubuntu 24.04 LTS Server Edition. Congratulations, you're ready to log in with the user that you created. In order to log in, start typing in your username. Mine was Savvy Nick. Press enter, and then you're asked for a password. Put the password in that you created, even though you're typing and not seeing anything, that does not mean that it's not actually being put in as a password. Just press enter. After you've made your attempt, you should see a very similar output that I'm seeing here. This means you're logged into the server. You'll notice below you have the username and then the host name, and it's ready for some commands. If it's been loading for a while and you're not seeing your username pop up, press enter a couple times. Sometimes the console gets messed up. That'll help you check if this, to see if the system is waiting for you to log in. Since we're in the console or command line interface, let's go and install that web server really quick so you can understand how to use this a little better. First gonna do sudo apt update just to update all the package mirrors that are currently available. I'm gonna type in my user's password and press enter. Now to get the specific web server package that we need, I'm gonna do sudo apt install and then Apache 2. I'm gonna press enter. Then it's asking me, do I wanna continue? The default option is yes, so I can just press enter again. Give it a few moments as it's installing everything needed by Apache 2, the service. Now this web server will be accessible by default on your local network. One thing that we'll need to figure out is the current IP address of the server. So I can do IP space A, press enter. And here I see 10.0.2.15. I'm gonna have to remember that IP address so I can access it from different computers on my network. I need to see if a new folder exists since we installed the Apache package. I'm gonna do cd space slash var slash www slash html. And then if I do ls, I should see an index.html I do. And in order to open this file up, I'm gonna do sudo. Just use my favorite text editor like nano. Then index.html. Now I can actually make changes. So for example, here's the background color for the main page. Currently it's set to all Fs. So I believe that's white. So I can switch it to black and then just do a save on this file. It says, do I want to modify the buffer? Yes, I do. I did a control X in nano to write that file. And now with some port forwarding rules, you might need to do this in your router as well. I forwarded some ports between the local network aka port 80 for this HTTP server. Once I have forwarded things, I can access the server and I access this page by just simply going to a browser and typing in the IP address that I had before. So that 10.0.2.15 for me, that's all I typed in. And notice we have this Apache 2 default web page. Congratulations, if you see this, you're hosting your own web server and you'll notice this border outline is in black. That's usually typically white, but that's because I changed it in the index HTML file. You can read through this to make more changes. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comment section below. Also make sure to subscribe below, hit that notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.